Joshi, the founder and director of Chrysanthemum Chronicles, a contemporary publishing house that I run from New Delhi. And today I'm going to continue with the excerpt reading series that I have started from this book, the most coveted anthology from my publishing house, Songs of a Mermaid, Tales of Urban Women, edited by senior editor Deepak K. Chaudhary Sir. And this book has 16 stories from 16 deaf pens of 16 women writers. And this book is symbolical, allegorical, metaphorical. Uh, because we have used the theme mermaid and used it in a very different way. So you will find different kind of tales. And since I have decided to read it from the end to the beginning to the uh, first story, I'm going from backwards. So I'm going to take the second last story from the book, which has been written by, by a very good friend of mine. She's a very sweet human being and a person. And her story's title is The Dawning Sky. And this story talks about how atrocities towards women can make them broken. But still, if they have the willpower, they can overcome it. But although it leaves a scar on their psyche, on their mental health, on their uh, physical health many a times. But this story has a good ending. But I'm in this video series, I'm going to do the excerpt reading series only, which means three pages. And for my storytelling masterclass, I will come back again to this book where I would be reading out the full story in its full version. So you can subscribe to my channel to listen to my storytelling sessions or maybe the excerpt reading series because I'm giving you reasons to grab this book from Amazon or Flipkart and you would love all the stories. Look at the cover page. It's so enticing. It is all about women with their struggles, their challenges, their love stories, their failures and how they cope in the sea of life, the mundane sea of life. So today I'm going to read out three pages from Moshumi Bhattacharya's The Dawning Sky. I stared at her lifeless body, wide-eyed, appalled. Her mother was surrounded by some women, prostrated with grief, wailing incessantly. The father was sitting in a corner, crouched on his knees. A chilled sensation went down my spine. The victim's mutilated body looked severely malnourished. They were a family of daily wage laborers living in a skint shack in the outskirts of Guwahati. My cameraman gestured me to get ready for the live coverage. Ignoring his instructions, I silently came out on the road in front of the victim's house. Philip, I looked at him. Let's do it from here. My voice was somber. Dilip obeyed me silently. I looked at the camera. I had to cover the case of a 14-year-old girl who was gang-raped and then brutally murdered while she was returning from school. I asked my companion not to shoot the wailing mother or the mutilated body of the hapless girl. I didn't want to make it a sensational news by capturing the wretchedness of the family on my camera. After reporting all the information related to the incident, we went straight to our studio. When I reached my apartment, it was already 12 o'clock at night. To my dismay, there was an electricity failure in my area. I lighted up a candle and sat on a chair with a glass of water. The whole episode left me fuming. I decided to fight for that poor family till they get justice. I will be a voice for such victims. I was brimming with confidence. That fragile girl who lacked courage and willpower to fight back some 10 years back emerged as a self-respecting, confident woman ready to combat the evils of society. Myra, my child, do you hear me? Daddy's voice was tense. Before I could reply, he ran towards the door and shouted at somebody. Where am I? I strained my eyes to look around. Hospital. I gasped in bewilderment. I felt a sharp pain in my lower abdomen, but I couldn't move my body an inch. What happened to me? I wondered. My lips were drying up and burning. A young nurse came running towards me. She checked my pulse and blood pressure and adjusted the saline bottle. Hanging from a stand beside my bed, it was difficult to read her unexpressive face. I warily turned my gaze a bit towards my left and spotted my daddy, standing very close to my bed. He was looking tired and disheveled, face unshaven and patches of dark circle around his eyes. Did I see a teardrop running down his cheek? 
I tried to look more closely, but I felt sick and closed my eyelids. Water, I murmured. I felt a wet touch on my lips, but a twinge of pain made me wince. My chin was hurting badly. The nurse removed the damp cotton ball that she was using to wipe my lips. I cannot give her water without the doctor's permission. Let me inform the doctor that she has regained her senses. Saying so, she walked away from the cabin. I am with you, my child. Everything will be fine. Daddy's voice quivered a bit. I looked at him but couldn't stare for long. Where is mom? I felt too weak to keep my eyes open anymore. Help, help. Don't do this to me. Let me go. Please, Rohan, I beg you. Rohan, but what are you doing? Oh no, help. It's too dark. I can't say anything. Oh God, daddy. Daddy, daddy, save me. They will kill me. Daddy came close to me and touched my forehead. Two grave-looking men in white coats were standing beside me. I was too scared to utter a word. So I'll stop here. These were the three pages from the Songs of a Mermaid book, Tales of Urban Women, that has come out from my publishing house. And this book is going to be an amazing read for you all that I, go, uh, I can promise. And if you want to know more about what happens in the story uh, further, you can pick this book up today itself from Amazon and Flipkart and enjoy reading it because I'm telling you, if you have to know the story, you have to grab the book. And also, if you are a writer, you can check the website on the Get Published segment. Go there and find out all the guidelines that how you can send your manuscript to us. There are two modes available. You can all go through the guidelines and come back through the mail ID with your book proposal maybe or if you have a collection of poetry which you would love to which you would love us to look at loopers always happen i'm sorry so this is a random video as so there is going to be no edits anyways i hope that you will support me as a woman entrepreneur and as a publisher because i am really bringing out good books because i feel confident in bringing them out with so many good writers associated with the group and helping me forge ahead. So I thank them. I thank all the writers of this book as well and all the other books that I've done with many of the writers. I deeply feel honored and privileged that I could publish your work and I look forward to a longer association because there are many things planned. So you will be benefited and I would be happy to publish you. So keep supporting and do subscribe to my channel Mona Lisa's Literary Sanctuary. And you would be able to enjoy many such videos because I'm going to bring out many more content and also going to tell you different different things about our publishing house and also some of the facts and tales and stories of uh, the books that I'm going to read from the journals that I'm going to read. So uh, stay tuned and support me and do subscribe. Bye all.